Welcome everyone back to my YouTube channel. It's been a long time since I've spoken to you. We're actually two and a half weeks out from the Arnold Classic USA, my comeback show, which is um, very exciting for me. I've had all of last year off to rest and recover and put on more muscle and um, mentally prepare for this contest because I'm someone that really wants to do well in bodybuilding. I really want to win. I want to win the Olympia. And that only comes with, unfortunately, time. Laying down new muscle tissue, with, which isn't quick. No matter what people say or whatever a product tells you, it's not a quick fix. You can't gain 20 pounds of muscle in a week. Um, so you have to take a whole year off to uh, put a lot of muscle on. Um, I got up to 145 kilograms, which was nearly 320 something pounds. And I've already dropped 20 kilos, which is, which is 45 pounds I've dropped already, which is, um, some people say it's not called for, you don't need to do that. It's just kind of a waste putting weight on and then dropping it off. But my beliefs are that um, if you're cushioning the joints, especially with body fat and having a constant energy source with body fat, um, you're able to put more muscle on. I mean, when the body's deprived of a nutrient, especially energy, um, more than likely you're not gonna put on any muscle because physiologically there's no need for the body to adapt and gain muscle when you're in a deficit, there's just no need. So, um, and there's a bit of a good excuse to go out and eat what you want, have the seafood diet, seafood and eat it. Um, but really, it's all about being in a positive calorie balance, eating probably every two to four hours, good amount of protein, good amount of carbohydrates, good amount of fats, that's been the best thing for me to put muscle on. Um, and I've done that all through my off season. So now it's leading into the last two and a half weeks and I'm just thinking about food all the time. But we're here to do an arm workout and I'm gonna start my arm workout with triceps. Um, triceps has three heads, tricep bracket, long head, lateral head, and medial head. Um, this tri most tricep movements recruit all of them, but some, depending on where the hand's positioned, I, my biggest belief is it emphasizes one of those heads more than the other. What we're gonna start here, it's, it's like a cable crossover for the triceps. Um, what you'll do is you'll grab, you don't have anything on the cable at all, you grab it with your hand, um, or grab it this way, with, grab it with your hand, come around to this side, the same, the same thing, now what you want him to do is just stand a little bit back from the cable and you want to depress your scapula. So you actually don't want to have your shoulder blades coming up and down. If you think of putting your shoulder blades into your back pockets, you're set. Because then right from there, you're just going to do an elbow extension. We don't need any kind of shoulder movement coming in, into this exercise because then shoulders are going to come into the movement. You're going to lose tricep recruitment. That's the golden key here for any tricep exercise. And you'll when it gets quite heavy, it's okay to, to strain or, or to use another muscle in the last couple of, couple of reps. But you don't want to be starting the movement with the shoulder and tricep. You want to be you know, always activating tricep completely. And, and by depressing scapula, putting your shoulder blades into your back pockets, you're able to then utilize your triceps for the movement and not bring anything else into it. I go for like a two, two and a half second negative, which is this is the negative movement, and a one second to a one and a half second positive movement. That's my, um, my target time under tension for today. And I never lock out and pause at the bottom. I never pause at the top because the muscle needs to grow under tension. And if I'm resting here, the muscle's not getting recruited. It's most likely on the joint or on other muscles, stabilizing muscles to hold the, the weight there. Being two and a half weeks for my contest as well, I'm just gonna do some more high reps, 12 reps today. Um, a not noticeable thing that I've had a lot of good feedback on this last, well really five months, six months has been my arm growth. And it's been to do with hitting them twice a week um, and hitting them with a lot of volume. Um, now my, vol my interpretation of volume might be different than others. Volume's kind of like a, a blanket statement for a lot of things, but volume really, is a lot of sets in the one, one workout. Um, and that's how you kind of target. But then at the same time, you could say, you know, if you're doing only one hard set and you're only doing four exercises, that's only four hard sets. So that's only a small amount of volume. But really you could have done 10 or 12 building sets for that one hard set. So you're gonna incorporate all that. What I'm meaning is, so I'll normally train with one hard set. I'll build up with, say so chest and back and shoulders and legs. My whole purpose is progressive overload. That's how muscle's built. 
Now, what I've found is my arms never responded with that. I would do like two 45 pound plates on either side of a lying tricep extension. I'd do three or four plate aside close grip bench and they still would never grow. No matter how heavy I did them, I'd do a, a two plate um, bicep curl, 100 kilo bicep curl and they wouldn't grow. And I'm like, why isn't this growing when progressive overloads how the muscles do grow? It's because when I'm doing something like a, a bench press or a dumbbell press, they're recruiting so much more in that movement. And that's why they're not growing because they've already had a maximum overload. So by doing another really heavy session with arms, it's, it was really overkill. It was really not giving them enough time to recover in between workouts. So what I found with doing volume, and what I mean by volume is like four sort of semi-hard sets and not going to full maximum recruitment. I'm sort of, I'm sticking to the same weight for like four sets, but it's really only 85% of my work, of my intensity, whereas chest, back, shoulders, legs, it's all 100% of my intensity. So you'll see more today when we go through it. So what I've done is incremented up evenly in my building sets to one hard set and I've stuck at this hard set and I'm doing multiple, I'm doing four sets of that. Um, the reason why is because you're wanting to warm up the muscle. So you're wanting to increment up evenly from set to set until you hit one set where you're really struggling to do and then you stick to that for four sets. That's volume for me in, in my eyes. The building sets are so important though. Don't ever not do building sets. You need to make sure you're doing a light set all the way up to your hardest set. I mean, I've, I train with people with not even a quarter of the training experience as me and they'll start at a heavier weight than what I would and they almost make fun of me that I'm starting lighter, but it's really to do with protecting your joints and longevity. And that's what it's all about. There's no point burning yourself out with like your warm up sets um, when you don't even get to hit your target weight. And more, more importantly, there's no point getting injured. So that's what I'm all about. our second we're doing a tricep push down uh, with the rope I've found in my experience that tricep push downs with the rope or with your hands in this kind of movement is a, more the lateral head recruitment is what I found of, of myself and if I'm doing something like a straight bar where my hands are, are pronated um, I'm more I've got more emphasis coming through my thumb area I feel like that's recruiting more through my long head of my tricep so just where you're positioning your hands and putting that pressure through is either going to display to the outside of your arm or the inside depending on where that force is coming in and that's what helps you emphasize that part of the muscle. I mean there's some beliefs out there that are like all, all or nothing you, you're either recruiting all of the heads or none of them and as bodybuilders we really try and target sort of one area of that muscle more than the other areas. Same thing, not letting your shoulder blades come up and uh, in the movement, you're keeping them depressed the whole time and you're, you're not letting your, your elbow come away from the body, you're keeping it just fixed in that same position. I took all of 2018 off. Um, it was, to work on a lot of things, it wasn't just physically, it was more a, like everyone has like a, a business strategy or a relationship strategy or, you know, home, but they don't really, rarely do you find people have a happiness strategy and that's where it come to for me. It was, you know, I'd love bodybuilding and then all of a sudden I was just finding life wasn't that enjoyable anymore with constantly dieting and training and traveling and pushing yourself to the limit and taking that step back. I didn't take the year off training. I took some time off training, but enough to just give my joints and my body a good rest. And then I still got back into lifting and, and loving lifting again. And 
just focusing on things around my life that would just bring more happiness to to know that you know you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket basically um, and just to refresh refresh my mind but I've worked on a lot of things like to make my body a bit more symmetrical like my arms needed to come up and my hamstrings my traps um, so that's come up as well and I hope that this show coming into it I'll be able to you know present a package that that wins the show um, and there's a lot of good competitors on there and all you can do is your best and if someone else wins that's when you know you shake their hand and say congratulations but you still will do everything in or I'll do everything in my power to win the contest and that's that's the most important thing like winning isn't everything but wanting to win is if you don't want to win then you're not going to do the extra cardio and stick to the diet and that's the hardest part with the food component with any goal it doesn't just have to be bodybuilding it's any goal in general if if you don't want it bad enough if you want the instant pleasure more than the long-term goal that's when you're not going to stick to the diet every day Like I'd rather squat and under like a ton of weight with risk of buying my knee out than do a curl. It's just feels so, coming away from the body is so awkward. Today we did arms and I did all triceps first and then I did all biceps to finish off. Sometimes I do a set of triceps and a set of biceps. I'll pick two exercises that are kind of opposing like a tricep push down straight bar and then a straight bar bicep curl. Um, and I'll just do a set of each of them and sort of flush blood back and forth. I, I do find that opposing muscle groups are really well to train together um, for just for the blood flow factor. Um, but really getting back to the arm session today, it was um, all about volume for me. I mean, I've spoke a bit before about progressive overloads, my main um, belief system with building muscle mass. Um, but there's also a component of, of fascia stretching. The fascia is um, like a tissue that wraps kind of from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. And it can be restrictive in certain muscle groups and by getting a really good uh, pump or a good amount of blood flow there, you can stretch the fascia and also increase, you know, um, by increasing blood flow, you increase recovery and, and recovery is a big thing when it comes to progressive overload. If you're not recovering enough or you're hitting a muscle too frequently, then you're not going to recover in time for the muscle to grow. So what we're ultimately trying to do is little tears, little micro tears in the muscle tissue, not macro tears because then the muscle can't recover. Um, and today we, we did that, we did just more volume stuff because um, doing like my dumbbell press or my bent over row is gonna be a much larger recruitment of a progressive overload for my bicep or my tricep in those movements. And that's why I found I couldn't, there's no amount of weight I could barbell curl functionally and recruit enough of my, my bicep that I could do, you know, with a bent over row or a dumbbell row, I could find I could, you know, dumbbell row a lot more than I could dumbbell curl. So therefore my, my bicep would always get you know, a larger overload from that. So from a weight perspective, the overload just wasn't there when, with arm workouts. And I've found by doing a lot of volume, a lot of, um, a lot of sets per exercise, um, it's just allowed my arms to grow. With my workouts from week to week, um, they don't really change that much. The exercises I've found are, are all very similar. 
from week to week, but the order will be, might be different. So I might start with a, a tricep push down rope or a tricep push down straight bar or, or so on like that. So, but for the most part, I find that this has been the most um, effective way for my arms to grow so far. That's the hardest part with bodybuilding, I think, is the food component. Is you know, sticking to the diet for one's hard enough. Um, not, not eating food that's going to give you temporary joy and, and instant gratification um, is the hardest part with bodybuilding. But um, ultimately, the goal is to win the Arnold Classic, and that's going to take sacrifice, and nothing great ever comes without a sacrifice. So um, the food I'm eating at the moment is really fish and chicken predominantly. And we're lucky here in Australia, we get kangaroo, which is a very lean form of red meat with a much higher iron content than what normal, regular like a beef has, like cow has. So I find that I'm having like that to finish my day, which is not a large amount of saturated fat compared to like a, even a lean or extra lean beef mince that still has a, a decent amount of fat. I think there's something like 10 grams of saturated fat per 100 grams, even in an ultra lean um, beef. So to have kangaroo instead, which is like two grams per 100 grams, it's, it's obviously much lower um, and, and much less saturated fat means a better burning of body fat in my opinion of overall calories. I mean if you can avoid saturated fat for the most part um, as well as sugary carbohydrates you're going to get a better result. Um, I find that having a large amount of protein in every meal has been definitely the best, op best option for both muscle growth and also keeping fuller for longer. Um, so my, predominantly my calories are made up mostly of protein so I think two-thirds of my diet or just so, you know, over half at least is protein and the rest is carbohydrates and greens and, and essential fats. Done. Let's see.